responding to all of this stuff about the buzz, he said, for what it's worth, I've heard this several times myself. Well, I have a theory on a lot of this, Michael, but we have a guest. Yes, we have a great I'm guest. I'm going to tease this for later. Your theory. Yes. Our guest happens to be Trevor Bauer's former manager and the manager of the Cleveland Indians and one of the best guys I've ever met in the game, and that's Terry Francona. Terry, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you? Good, guys. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Uh, you, you were on hold when I said that. You, you're not in the game as long as you are without loving it. What what is your thoughts about the news of this week with three four people losing their jobs now and more allegations out today? Yeah, Michael. You know what, man? I've been trying to formulate my thoughts because you know, I mean, shoot, I did. I knew I was going to get interviewed. I, I'm I'm confused. I mean, there are people that I really care about. You know, Alex Cora, who played for me, and I, I love him, and, and, and I respect A.J. Hinch so much. And, and Carlos Beltran, as a player, you know, had a had a reputation that was second to none. And then, you know, then you see what happens, and and I think what I, I guess how I feel is that they're, they're still really good people. They, they, they made mistakes, and they're going to pay the price. And the commissioner was very, you know, he told us, what, you know, hey, we can't do this. Don't do it. And when it happened, he kind of brought the hammer down. The guys will pay their penalty, and then they'll be back in the game. I think that's how it's supposed to work. And you think they will, you think they will be able to get jobs again, Terry? Well, you know what? I'm not the person hiring, right? But I, I really do. I think I think not just in our game, but in our country. I think if people are show contrition, we 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 enjoy forgiving, which I think is a good thing. Um, but I think there's also a way to handle it, and it's mm -hmm. by being, you know, like I said, showing contrition and and you know apologizing that's there's nothing wrong with that now it seems like aj was put in this situation because of things he didn't do not so necessarily the involvement or the construction of it uh, so you're a manager if you see this is going on is it an easy fix to blow the whistle put a stop to it or could you understand how difficult that might be especially if it's working well, I can't speak to this in particular because we did we didn't do it and I'm, right. I'm, I'm glad but I can tell you there are a lot of nights when I go home when I know I need to have a conversation with a player, especially like a veteran player, where where he may view it differently than I do. And and I lose a lot of sleep over stuff like that because obviously you feel an obligation to, to get it straightened out. But you don't want to just beat somebody over the head and lose them. So that's probably the biggest thing a manager has to do is try to keep your house in order, but also keep guys feeling good about themselves and keeping the ball club going in one direction. Terry Francona, manager of the Indians, is our guest. Now, Terry, your, your Hall of Fame bona fides, they're set. Two World Series, you know, considered one of the best managers ever. And I was talking about this earlier in the week. Is the aphrodisiac of ultimate success so intoxicating that it does cloud the line between right and wrong? Oh, I think that certainly can happen, too. I also know, you know, Michael, when we've been in the game, you know, a long time, some of the stuff is almost romanticized. You know, when you think back of, you hear the stories in the 1950s of guys who had binoculars and, you know, they're stealing signs that, you know, they're crawling up into the stands or into the scoreboard. And in our game, like I said, it kind of gets romanticized. But I think with technology, it kind of crossed the line a little bit. And, and nobody feels real comfortable with it. You know, it's just, you know, like I always feel like we have an obligation to make our signs tough enough where teams can't get them, but easy enough where our guys can get them. But that's not including technology. And, and that's where I guess there's kind of a line. And then, and, and again, I'm not the judge and the jury, but that's how I feel. Terry, as a manager, um, your thoughts on A.J. Hinch in this situation. It seems like that he may have been ambivalent about it or maybe outright really wasn't for it. Um, when you think about the situation he was in, what are your thoughts? You know, it's hard because I, I wasn't there. It wasn't, you know, it, you know it, you're, you're trying to keep your team, like I said, going in one direction. And, and when you're 
when your most valuable members of the team, which it sounded like, you know, were the guys behind it, that's probably a really difficult yeah. position to be in. Um, I don't, I don't envy that. Now, I, I envied how good they were, but that is a really difficult situation, and that's why you try to stay on things day every day, so things don't get past you, where it gets to the point where you can't fix something. Uh, you might have heard when you were on hold, your former pitcher said that he has heard rumors of the Astros wearing buzzers on their body. Have you heard those rumors, Terry? Never in my life. Um, I heard you kind of mentioning something, and I actually thought you were kidding. No. I thought it was like somebody was doing a like a, a, a parody or something. I, I no, never. I had never heard that. Yeah, because there's been rumors this week that, you know, as he hit the walk-off home run off Chapman to win the ALCS, Altuve was screaming between third and home, don't rip off my shirt. And there's a picture of a little piece of tape on his right side. And there's, a, I mean, there's a lot of smoke there. Obviously, there's no proof, but Bauer said that he's heard it. Other people have said that they've heard that they do wear buzzers, some of them. <laughs> That's a new one for me. I, I, I never even... <laughs> gave it a thought nor had i heard it um i could have to go look back at some of the videotape or something because i that's a new one for me now how much of it is on the victim because we saw when the news broke about the investigation there was video of farquhar when he was with the white Sox, changing the signs in the middle of the game because he sensed something was going on he heard the garbage can so how much of it is on on you as a manager to say they might be doing something. We're going to now have to be ahead of the game. We're going to have to change our signs. We just can't allow ourselves to be victims of this. Well, that's, that's a great point. But as the game has evolved, you know, they've, they've, they've eliminated the, the trips to the mound because guys were going out, you know, every – when it was a clutch situation, sometimes guys are going out every other pitch or, you know, almost every pitch because they didn't want to put a sign down. Um, that's how good these guys were getting at it. Uh, but now they've limited that. You know, and sometimes you'll see a pitcher, like, take his hat off and look at what sequence of signs they're using, which I think is good. I think maybe they need to let pitchers wear a, an armband, like a wristband, that, almost like the quarterbacks have. So there's a, you're able to have some communication with your catcher without having to go out to the mound. You know, there's there's got to be ways that aren't overly difficult that can help teams communicate and not slow the game down. Terry, I, I want to throw something at you um, and get your take on it. The, the electronics obviously brings this into a different realm. You've crossed a Rubicon because electronics are in. And I say that the way you eliminate this, that nobody on the 25-man roster or the coaching staff could be inside the video room during a game. And I've also always believed, Terry, that with the challenge system, you should challenge uh, in real time, not before somebody looks at a replay. If your player says, I was safe, then you challenge, and you have to trust him or not. Your thoughts? Um, you know what? They, they give us 30 seconds to, to make a challenge, and I actually am pretty comfortable with that. I, I understand your 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 uh, what you're saying. Um, maybe there's something to it. I don't I don't know. I mean, just you know, with with the super slow motion and stuff now, I don't know how many times you're going to get it right. Just because a lot of times when you're in the dugout, we have the, a worse view than almost anybody in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. Like you got to remember sometimes some of these fields that are crowned. You can't even see second base sometimes from the dugout. So, again, I, you know, you'd hate to be making decisions when you have the least information of anybody there. But your player's the closest, so he would be the one who signals you. They always say they're safe. <laughs> they do. <laughs> How many times you see a guy pop up and he's out by five feet and he's signaling, I'm safe, and, and you, you know he's out, and everybody thinks they're safe. If you lost to the Astros because of this, in the playoffs, how would you feel right now? Well, we lost to the Astros because of Cole and Verlander. I mean, we the first two games they threw the ball right by us. Right. You know, we they, we played them in 2017 and they swept us and they overwhelmed us. They were they were that good. But if um, you lost like the Yankees did in seven games, you know, or, or losing on the walk off, if there's something to the 2019 allegations. 
and you felt like you could have won that series. It was that close. How much would it bother you? Yeah, I don't know. You know what, guys? I guess I figure, I, I don't know. I guess I just, I've always felt like, hey, you go play, and if you're good enough, you're going to win. And it's just too easy to blame somebody else. I, I mean, I get it. I get what you're saying. But I, I just would rather put the onus on me and our team as opposed to blaming somebody else. I just, it just, it's not a healthy way to go about the game and your life. It just, it doesn't help anybody. Tara, can I ask you a question unrelated to cheating, simply about your managerial career? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, being, being in Cleveland, how similar is the feeling to being in Boston in, in terms of the pressure of how much this town wins a championship? And for you, you've now, you know, you've been there. You've managed like 1,100 games there or something like that. Um, how much has it gotten to you to really become important to, to bring a title to this city? Well, okay, it, it's different, obviously. I mean, in Boston, and you guys have seen it, you know, same in New York, there, you, you, there's so much passion, there's so much interest. You know, when I was there, every game was sold out. And, and, and along with that passion, the, there can't help but become a headache or two for the manager. That's just part of it. I mean, you're getting hit with media every day and questions coming out of, you know, every every game is dissected eight different ways. In Cleveland, it's not like that. But the pressure to win is the exact same now as it was 15 years ago in Boston. I mean, I tell people, I didn't come to Cleveland to go to pasture. You know, I, I just, I changed jobs. And I, I do think there's less fires to put out kind of off the field um, in Cleveland. You can spend more time actually on baseball, which I love. But when the game starts, I feel the same exact that I did in 2004 and as I did in 1997 with the Phillies. That'll never change. All right, so today starts the Diamond Resorts Tournament of Champions and uh, Four Seasons Golf and Sports Club in Orlando, and you are one of a, 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 an array of stars, Terry. John Smoltz, Justin Verlander, Larry Fitzgerald, Marcus Allen, Ray Allen, Roger Clemens, Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin. You like to have them on your staff. What is this about, and why do you love it so much? <laughs> well, okay, first of all... The Mike Flasky and his people, they do an incredible job. They they treat us so well, and, and they, they raise so much money for the Children's Hospital down here, which is first and foremost. We get to play with the LPGA girls, and they're ter they're terrific. But, you, you know, you go on the driving range. Today I went out there, and and, and there's Ray Allen. And, and, I mean, you see guys that Brian Erlacher, and you get to talk to them uh, – it just it's just so much fun to see not only the guys like Beckett that I see once a year now or Lester, but then you see guys for other sports and it's really fun. And and, and I'm to the point now where I mean I'm sixty, I don't hit the ball very far. So I gotta just try to survive the day. But some of these guys are really good. Now, this, uh, this tournament, you can see it on the Golf Channel today and tomorrow and live on NBC Saturday and Sunday. So if you want more information, go to uh, diamondlpga.com. Really uh, an array of stars like you would not believe. Before I let you go, Terry, are you happy to this point? I mean, it could change that you still have Francisco Lindor as your shortstop. Yeah, I don't think that's going to change. You don't? Um, I, no, okay. no. Um, I mean, I, I'm privy to the conversations that they aren't having. And by say that, I mean, I, I'll read something in the paper that some team is involved with the Indians, and I know that that's not happening. So I, I don't put a lot of stock. I, I put no stock into what I see because I, I know the conversations and, like I said, what isn't happening. Frankie's going to be our shortstop. Good stuff, Terry. I'll see you along the way. Have a good time this weekend in Orlando, and we thank you for answering the tough questions today. Thanks, Michael. Good to talk to you, man. You take care. All right, you go.